We've done buttons and motors and LEDs and they all work. But for a final capability, I would like to send analog data in one form or another from the Arduino to the PC and then display it on our GUI. Can we do it? We'll find out how on today's episode of Well, we're almost at the end of our journey to create a GUI for the Arduino board. We've learned how to send digital data from the PC to the Arduino and back. And we can send analog data from the PC to the Arduino. But there are two things we need to do before we wrap it all up. The first is to transmit analog data from the Arduino to the PC, which we will do in this video. And the last thing is to make the GUI look a lot better, which we will do in the next video. So let's get started. This time we'll start with the Arduino program. Just like the button, we will add a function to handle retrieving the value of a potentiometer and sending that data through the serial port to the PC. We will do this with a standalone function called handlePot. So, at the end of the program, we will paste a copy of the function instead of typing it, just to save a little bit of time, and then we'll explain what it is. So, in the handle pot function, we will, each time through the loop, look at the value, the current value of the potentiometer, which is an analog read on channel A0. That's what I have the potentiometer connected to. Now, one characteristic of the potentiometer is that it will jitter. What that means is that the reading, without touching the potentiometer, will change plus or minus one digit or so. And in that case, then we would be sending data back and forth a lot between the Arduino and the PC. So to stop that, what I've done is created a range of plus and minus two digits from the current reading for us to ignore. Anything within plus or minus two counts will be ignored and not processed. Anything outside of that will be processed. And that's where we make that decision right here in this if statement. So we look to see if the new reading is outside of that range. If it is, then what we do is we take that, that reading, which is a current reading, it's an integer, and in order to transmit it, we have to turn it into a string. So we do that. We turn it into a string with a string function and then store that into a variable called val. Now it's time to send that data over the serial port, and we have to construct our command, which consists of the first character, which tells it what it is to be processed. And in this case, it will be a lowercase v to indicate that it is a potentiometer reading. So we will send that to the serial port, and then we will send the value uh, of that reading, which is now a string, and we'll send that through the serial port over to the PC, and then it will be processed. The only thing we have to do after that, of course, is just save our current state so that we can use it when we go through and read the, uh, the value again in the loop. So, with that in place, we need to add the a function call to make this all happen. So just before the handle button function in the loop, which is up here in the loop function, place your cursor, hit the enter key, and then just make the function call by typing handle pot with open and close parens, and that's it. That should do it for the Arduino program. 
Everything to establish communications has been put in place in previous episodes. Now we can place code to handle incoming analog data from the potentiometer on the Arduino and process it for display on the GUI. Along the way, we will add a new visual control to graphically display the analog data from the potentiometer. First, let's get some of this stuff out of the way. We can make the form pretty later on. So we'll move this up out of the way. Let's move the red LED up, get it out of the way. And the count text box, we'll put that somewhere up there. Now, on the form, let's place a new text box. Text box right uh, here. So let's take that text box, we'll put it right there, and a new form, a new progress bar control right there. The progress bar will show a variable blue line that will grow or shrink as a potentiometer data gets larger or smaller. So the text box has been named text box three, and that's adequate. We'll just leave that alone. Progress bar will be called progress bar one, and that's fine for right now, but we will need to change one parameter on its properties, and that is the maximum value that it can display. We're going to change that from 100 to 1023. That is the maximum count that will be sent over from the potentiometer on the Arduino. And that's it for the form design. So let's turn our Focus now to the code. To store the analog data for processing, we will create a new variable called volts. At the beginning of the write to form function, we will add a new variable decoration right after num data. And it will be a single, and it will be called volts. So volts will hold the actual value of the potentiometer converted to voltage. Now, let's place a new case statement to handle the potentiometer data. At the bottom of the program, immediately after the last break, let's add a new case like that. And you'll notice that the new case will work with the command character V. A lowercase v indicates that this data that it was sent from the Arduino is potentiometer data. Just like the other cases, we will strip off the substring after the V, which will contain our count data from the potentiometer. Remember, this is analog to digital conversion, so it'll give us a, an integer number between 0 and 1023. But we're going to convert that to a single using the convert function, convert dot to single, and store that in num data. So we have the counts in num data. Now it's a little more easy for us to understand what the data is if we convert the counts to a voltage. So let's take the counts that are stored in num data and we will multiply them by 5 divided by 1024. And what that is is the amount of voltage per step. So if we multiply the voltage per step times a number of steps we will actually get the voltage that is at the potentiometer. So we'll store that value in volts. Now let's display that value in the text box using the text property for the text box 3. But that has to be a string. So we'll convert the number volts into a string and we will also format it so that we will always display two decimal places. So we'll use the string.format function to do that for us. So as a new thing, let's display the information on the progress bar. So the progress bar requires an integer value between 0 and 1023. That's the new maximum value we assign to it. So let's take our original substring 
count data that came in, which is from 0 to 1023 as a string, and we'll convert it to an integer using the toInt function on the convert function, and then we'll store that in the progress bar 1 value. That will then make the blue line grow to whatever value the new data indicates. And then we'll add our break statement. That's it. We're done. The form should now be able to display the potentiometer data. And that should be it for the c -sharp programming. Now, if you can click on the Start button and run the GUI, it should look something like this. We have the potentiometer on the Arduino board. The program to handle the potentiometer has previously been downloaded to the Arduino. And now we can check and see if it actually works. So let's turn the potentiometer up. And you'll see that in the text box we are displaying a value of voltage. And the progress bar is indicating that it's going up towards the maximum value. When we get all the way up, we are at 5 volts. And then we can decrease that back down all the way to 0. So, we've accomplished our task of displaying the potentiometer data. That wraps up all of the programming we need to do to handle either digital or analog data passing either way between the Arduino and the PC GUI. You should be able to easily modify the program to handle more devices and capabilities in your projects. What does remain, however, is to make the GUI attractive and easy to use. That will be done in the next video in the series. So until then, thank you for watching.